Hey guys, welcome to Rosie's Dessert Spot. In this tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how to create this marble drip and abstract chocolate decoration. To begin, you're gonna need a white chocolate mud base and I'm adding in gel food color into each, separated into three different colors, red, yellow, and turquoise. Once the colors have been mixed through thoroughly, combine your colors by spoonfuls into a prepped cake tin. I've used two six inches for this project. Once it's full, three quarters of the way, give it a bit of a marble with a knife or a sharp object and then cover in foil. So this is aluminium foil and I'm baking it as I normally would. Once you remove the foil, you'll notice your cake is not as domed as it would normally be and there's no caramelization on the sponge. Level off your cake, cut it in half. I used two cakes here in total for this project and then build your cake as you normally would. I've got a 10 inch cake board sticking my six inch cake on top with some buttercream. Then you could fill in with white buttercream but I decided to go in with two different colors so that when you cut the cake, it has a little bit more interest. This is a 6B tip. However, you don't really need a textured piping tip for this. When you cut it open, you won't really be able to tell. I will have a recipe to the white chocolate mud cake and also the buttercream that I've used in the eye icon above or in the description box below this video. Continue building your cake as you like. If you were to leave this naked, it would look epic just as is. And the center can be filled in with a different color. You won't be able to tell from the outside. I've decided, however, to cover this completely in white frosting. So creating the crumb coat, this will be a thin layer of frosting to go on the outside of the cake to trap in any crumbs. When you are making a cake that you're gonna finish off with buttercream, it's a good idea to make the crumb coat a little bit thicker, more so so you don't see the colors underneath. Go around with your bench scraper, making it nice and smooth on the outside. Bring that lip of frosting to the center and then pop it into the fridge to set for 20 minutes. After your crumb coat is nice and firm, apply your final layer of frosting. This will just be a thicker layer of frosting. You can choose to color this with gel food colors as well. I like to use the Americolor and also the Chef Master range. Smooth it down again, bring that lip of frosting to the center and then into the fridge she goes to set for at least 20 minutes or while you create your other decorations. This is white chocolate, compound chocolate, so I like to use Nestle brand. I've added in some canola oil. You could use vegetable oil or something pale and pretty tasteless. And then add in your gel food color. The reason we're adding in oil is that you can add in gel food color. If you didn't have the oil, your chocolate would likely seize. Pipe it into a half sphere mold. I'll have a link to Amazon where you can buy, find this mold and other molds that I use. Give them a bit of a shake till most of the chocolate is tipped out and then clean up the top. I ended up leaving mine in here for a little bit too long so it's set pretty firmly. However, that actually worked out in the end. If you have much fuller um, spheres, use that for the bottom of your uh, abstract chocolate decoration. It's gonna be a lot heavier and so it's gonna be more stable at the bottom. Follow the same steps again for two other colors. I've used blue and red. Clear up the top, put it into the freezer to set, and once it's set, pop those chocolates out. We're going to stick them together so I have a fry pan that was on heat for a while so the base is nice and hot. I'm going to melt just one side of those chocolates and then adhere it to a sphere. If you melt both sides, it still works too, it's just a little bit more fiddly. So melting down just one side is probably a lot easier. Now that they're all connected, I'm going to grab a piece of parchment paper or non-stick baking paper and start assembling my abstract chocolate figure. You're going to melt down just one side of each sphere and then connect it to the form that you're creating. Again, the spheres that were much fuller and heavier are now going to be placed at the bottom. They're going to keep everything stable and stop the figure from kind of tipping over. And your spheres that were a lot more hollow are now going to be the ones that are going to be arranged climbing upwards. Because these ones here are hollow, they're a lot lighter, so it makes them a lot easier to connect at the very top and to look as though it's gravity defying. Next is the chocolate ganache. I have some white chocolate and cream that I'm mixing together, melting it down in the microwave 
colored half of it and then combining the two colors into one bowl that you're going to be using to pour over your cake. Your cake should be nice and firm and cold by now, so pour that ganache straight over the top. And then over the sides. You can stop here or you can keep adding more and more. The more you add, obviously, the deeper your drip will be and the more would fall off the sides of your cake. You could try for three colors here instead. And then once it's just about set, you can add on some decorations. Here I've got some chocolate sprinkles and then I'm adding my chocolate sphere figure on top. I felt like it was missing a little something, so I made some half spheres and added them too. And you're done. And that is how you make a marble drip cake with some abstract chocolate decorations on top. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and give it a go. And if you do, hashtag Rosie's Dessert Spot on Instagram so I can see what you guys are coming up with as well. Thanks again for watching and feel free to subscribe to our channel. We upload a new cake decorating video every Tuesday. Bye for now.